Here we go, back again with another match review and what an absolutely fantastic performance tonight. I have to say from the start of this video, this is the best performance in a red and white shirt by this Sunderland side this season. Absolutely fantastic from the first minute to the last second of the match. We harassed, pressed, worked brilliant as a team and we won 2-0. Some superb finishes from from Charlie Wyke and Jordan Jones. So today's team news was Burgess goal. Burgess has been brilliant. You know, Burgess, you know, BD Burgess has been absolutely brilliant in goal over the last few weeks. And today, he was nothing less than superb. Then we had Sanderson and Luke O9 as the centre backs. We went 4 4 2. McFadzine, left back, power right back. Winchester and Scowan came back into the fold. Then we had Jones on one flank and we had McGeady on the other with White and Aidan O'Brien up top. Now, whether one was sitting behind the other, you know, is debatable. On the bench, it was Flanagan, Maguire, please Flanagan's back on the bench. Gooch, who's come out from injury. Diamond, Neil and Vaughans. Now, the first 10, 15, the first 10 minutes was a bit nervy, I thought. Now, oh, to be honest, I put my hand, I know, I put my hand up and say, look, I felt, I didn't feel confident at all tonight. <clears throat> I did not feel confident. In fact, I had a bad feeling. I had a really bad feeling. But it was Taffy Mackham's birthday. And when Taffy Mackham told me it was his birthday, all of a sudden, I thought, yes, I feel like we can get a result just for, just for the Welsh Wizard. But after about 12 minutes, the best bit of play I've seen from the Sunderland side for a ages and ages. We played the ball around the middle of the park, fantastic come to Winchester. Winchester over the right hand side, over the right hand side, he sprayed the ball over to McGeady. McGeady took the touch, controlled the ball perfectly. I mean the pass was pinpoint. Accuracy was absolutely fantastic. Took the touch, ran and drive towards the penalty box. Good 35 yards out, took a shot and it was going in the top corner but what a brilliant save. Now I do rate McGillery as a good goalkeeper and that was a fantastic save. Tip it round the post for a corner. Now, John Jones is looking fitter and sharper with every single minute on the pitch. With him on the right and McGeady on the left, you know, we, things are looking good. Corner from Jones comes across. Charlie White, now watch the back. Charlie White was standing on the edge of the penalty area. And as Jones took the penalty, Charlie White ran, darted zigzagly in towards the penalty spot and nobody marked him. I mean, let, let's face it. It's criminal from Portsmouth's side, but the finish was sublime. One touch, Charlie White. One touch. That's all it takes. That passage of play for me has been the best bit of play I've seen from the Sunderland side all season. From Winchester to the final touch from Charlie White. Absolutely awesome to watch. Charlie White, end of the day, he knows where the ball's going to be. He is, you know, he's been awesome. He's been absolutely Charlie Wonderful White. We'll call him the Wonder White because this season, one touch Charlie White. That's all it takes, one touch. And I'll prove the point because in the second half, ball came across. He had to take two or three little touches and he got the ball stuck under his feet and it went to the keeper when he, it was easier to score. But we'll give him that because the one touch Charlie with a header. Five to one. Someone said it was five to one for Charlie White to be the first goal scorer with his head. And all that bit of play there, just I, I was buzzing. I was absolutely over the moon. I couldn't believe it to be one up against Portsmouth so soon. And from then the half time, Portsmouth did try the huffed and puffed, but their final ball was so bad. Kept on going out of play on the left, out the right, overhitting the crosses. They had one or two opportunities where they were in the penalty box. Marquis got the ball. He tried to shoot but put the ball way wide. May have been tripped by Sanderson after the event, but no penalty. Now at half time, I was thinking we're 45 minutes away from an absolutely fantastic result because, uh, uh, because Ipswich drew with Lincoln. Lincoln dropped two points. Peterborough lost to Hull. Hull got two games in hand. So that result there is probably the better result. Peterborough getting beat because we have two games in hand over Hull. Second half comes out, and again, to every man marking the players, chasing down every lost cause, harassing their defence, time in, time out, 
even McFadzine was having an okay game. And it got to a point where Portsmouth, under that much pressure, they went there, right back, played the ball across the middle of the goal, right across, outside the penalty box, across their defence. And it almost got to their play. It got a little touch to it, but Jordan Jones, I mean Jordan Jones, he raced in. He has a superior pace and speed. He raced in, nipped the ball off the defender. He had the, the, the he had an awful angle. He was stumbling and he chipped the ball right footed over McGillery in the corner. Absolutely amazing. I mean, let's face it. Mr. Jones, Mr. Jones, Mr. Jones, Mr. Jones. He has this thing going on. He's absolutely on fire. Jordan Jones, absolutely amazing. Brilliant finish, two up. And did we, did we let Portsmouth get back into the game? No. We kept pushing, kept harassing, kept driving for every lost cause. Every time Portsmouth got forward, we had two defenders on them. Flanagan came off, Aidan O'Brien came off. Sorry, Flanagan came on, Aidan O'Brien came off. There was one point where Flanagan fouled his man in the penalty box. Was it a penalty? Some say it was, some say it wasn't. I'm not going to be biased. I actually thought it was a penalty, but I'm happy the referee didn't give it. He was in a good place. The referee only gets one chance to say it. I had to watch it three or four times until I sort of decided it was a penalty. So you can't really blame the referee. Even though I didn't referee had a good game tonight. I thought he played, I thought he had a good game. He, he wasn't, he gave one yellow card to Sanderson at one point. But at the end of the day, he let the game flow. And there was one or two fouls, but you know, there were, there were heavy, heavy challenges. So we've won 2 0. We saw the game out well. Kenny, Kenneth Bomber Jacket, Jacket has lost again. And we'll put the table up now. We'll put the table up because I mean, I am absolutely buzzing. I never thought, I, I, I was hoping and, and quietly hoping for a result tonight. But, I mean, there's the stats. Attempts, nine Sunderland on target, six. Sunderland, six attempts on target out of nine. Portsmouth, eight attempts, not one on target. Corners, six to Sunderland, four to Portsmouth. Sky's man of the match was Luke O'Neill. nine. Luke O'Neill nine was absolutely magnificent. But like I said before, we never give up a lost cause whatsoever. And I have to say, it was a perfect team performance. Tonight was the perfect team performance. The perfect display of football from a Lee Johnson Sunderland side I have seen this season so far. We come to a crest of a wave. Let's hope we can continue it to the, the final of the Papa John's Trophy on Sunday against Tramay. But Tramay are in good form. It would be no means feat. It would be difficult to beat them, but hopefully we can. Now we'll go to the standings. Like I said before, Hull are in top place with 35 games played, 65 points. Peterborough, second place, 35, 33 games played, 62. Lincoln, 33, 61. Sunderland, 33, 60. Doncaster, 31. Five points now behind Sunderland. And Portsmouth in sixth place, eight points behind Sunderland. There's a runaway train of four teams. It's between Hull, Peterborough, Lincoln and Sunderland who get promoted now for me from the top two. Score, I'm going to give him immediately out of tens. Burge never put a foot wrong. Eight out of ten. Sanderson, yellow card but did brilliant again. Stalwart, magnificent, grown in stature. Eight out of ten. McFadzine was probably the weakest link on the pitch. I'll give him six and a half. Seven out of ten. Max Power. Pff, Max Power, captain's role again. Driving his team on. I'm going to give Max Power seven and a half. Scowing seven. Didn't really see him doing much. We did a lot of the dirty work. Winchester for me. This is where it becomes interesting. This is where it becomes interesting. Winchester has found his footing. Winchester seems more of an assertive player and some of his passing looks absolutely spot on mind it does there was one moment he got the ball winchester he was facing that way got the ball at his feet one touch and then played the ball without looking to mcgady's feet on the left hand side a good 30 yard pass that pass for winchester there sums up his display tonight it was 
for me, Winchester, eight and a half out of ten. Close to being man of the match. Close, so close. Jordan Jones again. What a display of football, Jordan Jones. Getting better. Scores a goal and assist. What more could you want? Jones tonight, nine out of ten for Jordan Jones. Nine out of ten. Absolutely superb. McGeady, great on the left-hand side. I'd give him seven and a half. O'Brien, he might do all the dirty work, I don't know. I'd give O'Brien a seven. Charlie Wyke, again, he scores a goal. What more do you want from a striker? A score goal, get you on the, you know, on the front foot, get you in front, get you, you know, going with confidence. A brilliant strike from, from Charlie Wyke. Charlie, wonderful Wyke. Who believe would be saying that? But yes, he deserves all the credit that comes along. So for me, Charlie Wake. I, uh, <coughs> excuse me. I hope that cove has not come back. But anyway, excuse me. Like I said, Charlie Wake. 8 out of 10. Brilliant. Brilliant display from Charlie Wake. Fantastic goal. All he wanted to strike to do was score a goal. Flanagan came on. Dodgy haircut. Mm, if he probably, probably needed to today's game for Sunday. Who have we got left? Luke Goal 9. What can I say about Luke Goal 9? Luke Goal 9's display and defence is nothing but an absolute miracle to find this guy, to bring this guy to Sunday. If we get promoted this season, if we get promoted and win a cup this season, right? Don't know why I'm wearing headphones anymore. Not even plugged in. <clears throat> Luke O9 needs to take a massive chunk of the credit for what he's done at this club. He is an absolute role model at Sunderland Association Football Club. He's absolute fantastic. He gives 110%. He chases every lost cause. The guy isn't massive, but he jumps the highest in the team. His defensive duties have been nothing short but miraculous since he's coming at left centre back. Absolutely miraculous, I have to say that. And for me, Luke going nine, he pushes Winchester for man of the match. He pushes Jordan Jones for man of the match. I'm going to agree. I'm going to agree with Sky. I'm going to give him joint. I'm going to give him joint because Jones deserves the plaudits, deserves the admiration for the goal he scored and the assist he, he gave. But Luke O9 does all the dirty work. And for me, Luke O9 deserves joint man of the match with Jordan Jones. Two absolute great displays. We've won 2 0. I am absolutely over the moon. Thanks for watching the video. Please subscribe to the channel. Please like the video. Portsmouth fans, I feel your pain. I really do feel your pain. I, I wish you all the best in the Papa John's trophy on Saturday. And it's a crying shame that you're only going to hold the trophy for one day. That there is ridiculous. That should not happen. That should have happened earlier on. Or our game should happen later on. You shouldn't hold the trophy for one day, then give it away. But yeah, I feel your pain. I wish you all the best on Saturday. I really do. I wish you all the best in the playoffs. Because I think the playoffs is about the best Portsmouth can hope for. You know, I do have a lot of Portsmouth fans who watch the channel. And I do wish you all the best. But well done, Lee Johnson. Lee Johnson and that team today. That was the best all-round team performance I have seen for a long time. So well done. Absolutely brilliant. Thanks for watching the video. And again, my live stream on Sunday for the Tranmere match. Don't forget and watch the preview for that game tomorrow. SAFC Fan TV on Thursday night. Subscribe to that channel. Great bunch of lads. Don't forget to watch that. And their Wembley Way preview will be coming up as well. See you later. Take care. Good night. God bless me. God go with you. And I'm going to go and have some sweet dreams tonight. Sweet. I was going to say sweet Luke 09, but I don't want to dream about Luke 09, but I want some sweet dreams. Right, take care everybody, good luck. Oh.